In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a custom companion profile that I've built to get you started for your ATEM mini series. Now this companion profile is gonna work with all of the ATEM mini series from the mini to the pro to the pro ISO and even the extreme and the extreme ISO, there's a version for that which I have plugged in here and is running this recording session. Now the best way to run it is gonna be on a stream deck, but if you don't have a stream deck, then I'm gonna show you how to run it for free today on a computer or an iPad. Um, so don't worry about going out and spending 250 on that if you just wanna download this and get started and to sort of expand the capability of your ATEM Mini Pro line. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to run that um, very briefly on a Pi if you wanna get something for under 100 bucks into your rig that's just gonna act as the server to run the software so that you don't need to actually have the computer connected. But today I'm gonna to show you how to do that on a Mac and to get that installed and underway. Now, the first thing that you would wanna do is to go to my website, which is davidjoshuaford.com. And if you go to companion profiles down here, there's a free trial. And if you scroll down, I've got four versions here, which I will flip over to. So the first one's gonna be a 32 button profile for the ATEM Mini Extreme. You'll see you've got inputs one to eight here, you've got media players one and two, super source, you can change black and color auto cut, you can change the media pool and the downstream key up here. You can control some slides and um, some graphics, H2R, and then you've got two keys, and then you've got a streaming and a record button all on here. So there's gonna be plenty packed in there. It is just a one page thing to download, so it's very simple to install. Um, the other one that I'm gonna look at is, I've got a 32 button for the ATEM Mini Pro. So in this one, you've got the preview and the program buttons that are separated in there. And if you long press um, on the preview buttons, you can also change the auxiliary out on the HDMI. But similar sort of functions there in terms of H2R, changing the media pool. And then the next one is uh, for the 15 button. So if you've got a 15 button stream deck, I've got two profiles for this, for the um, Pro and for the Extreme. They're not gonna quite have as much functionality in it, obviously, because of fewer buttons. Um, but what I've gone with here is for the Pro, uh, we've got inputs one to four, you've got uh, key, media pool, and then again, you can long press the, the menu and the custom button for streaming and recording to toggle that on and off. Um, and then for the Extreme, you've got inputs one, two, three, four, seven, eight, which you use for graphics. Um, and then you can long press this to change the auxiliary out in terms of the HDMI. And again, long pressing on the menu and the custom page jump buttons in order to trigger a stream start or a record start. All right, so they're the four that we've got there. Um, you can find them, as I said, on the website, um, download them for free so that you can just um, get this profile going and you can um, try out some of the functionality of Companion without having to uh, pay for a profile or even to um, get the uh, Stream Deck. Um, all right, so the next thing that you'll want to do is to go get the Companion app, which you can find at uh, Bitfocus. .io, go read more, download, and I've already logged in here, but it'll ask you to log in, beta builds, and then you wanna grab the latest build version. I'm running a Mac M1 Mac Max, whatever you call it. Um, so I'm gonna grab this ARM version here, just download that. Um, but you can also run this on a Pi or a Windows or an older Mac, um, so there's plenty of options there. Okay, so from my downloads, I'm going to open this and drag it into the applications. Um, I've got a couple in here. This is, I just downloaded this latest one you can see here. I usually keep my betas named by their latest build version. So we're up to um, 3696, as you can see, I've already got that one. I did that earlier today. So I'm just gonna delete that for now. Um, but this is essentially what I'm running here. So I'm gonna boot that up and then under your taskbar, you can go show hide window and you'll see that I'm running on the local address and I'm gonna launch the GUI. All right, so that brings us into here. So I'm running something here, which is my paid version, which has got a whole ton of stuff in there, which is why there's a whole bunch of um, modules in there already, but usually this would be blank when you bring it in. But one of the other great things about this profile is that even if you have your own custom profile, if you import this 
custom one that I've done, you could add in another ATEM. So maybe you've got your primary ATEM, but then you want to run a secondary switcher. You could just bring in this profile and have a, um, some presets ready to go under a different um, ATEM Mini Pro or else I've got an ATEM Mini Extreme running. So I run a couple of things at the same time. Um, so first of all, we're going to find a page to import this onto. Um, I'm going to go, I know that I've got page 60. Or I think, yeah, that one was free. Um, so you could just do this on page one. It, doesn't, it can be any page that you import this into. And I'm going to go import. And I'm going to grab my particular file. I'm going to use the, um, the 32 extreme because that's what I have plugged in here. And you'll notice that it's going to make these instances here. These are ones that are already on my machine. Um, but otherwise, you would just have it saying create a new instance. And you can just go straight along to import onto page whatever it is. For you, it's probably page one. This one's going to be 64. And if I click this, it's going to wipe this page. And then it's loaded that in. And now I have this uh, switcher that's ready to go. So this is what it looks like when it's loaded up. I'm going to have control over the preview uh, for inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mine are actually being labeled, so that's why they look a little bit different here. Media players 1 and 2, super source. I can change the black color or bars by holding that down. I can do an auto fade or a cut. Um, VLC playback, um, media pool playback if I want to switch through some of the uh, media pool slides. Um, if I jump into Chrome, let me show you that. Um, so here's a PowerPoint presentation essentially that I've got. And if I go um, through here, I've got slide control. Um, or I can press and hold it and it will start the slides and go back. This is a very old one. I'll hold it down and hit stop to get out of that. Um, there's a clock. And then I've got this stream and record button, which uh, I'm recording at the moment, but I'm not streaming. So if I hold that down for half a second, then it will toggle record or stream. When you've installed this, one of the first things that you want to do is change the first page jumps. So at the moment, um, what I've got here is this uh, button jumps to this page, the page that's on. So by default, it's not actually going to any page other than the one that you've installed it to. So this is where you just need to click in here and change that to the page that you want. Any one of your 99 pages, I'm just going to set it to home. And then in my build, I've got this custom page, which I've set to page number two. Um, so that's where I'm going to put that one for the uh, record page jump. So now when I click on menu, it's going to jump back to my page one that I set. That's what it actually looks like in the, my full paid version here. Um, likewise, under custom, no, sorry, under show, I've got some page jumps here. So this is just taking me back to what I'm doing for today's show. Um, and we're back on page 64. So if I click over onto this PTZ1 button here, you'll see that my ATEM module I've called XATEM. Um, and under my connections, this is where the ATEM module lives, XATEM. So if I go edit, you can click on the target IP and you can update your target IP number. So for me, it's 192.168.8.223. But for you, it's going to be something different. I recommend setting it manually within your ATEM software. So we're going to save that. Once you've downloaded the profile and companion, I would recommend going back to my website. If you go uh, David Joshua Ford and under companion profiles, you'll see install, installation guide. And this has been written for a Mac, although it would be very similar for a Windows. And these are the applications that you're going to need to run this, which is companion version 2.2.0 beta version or later, um, a Mac, Blackmagic switcher software, Stream Deck, VLC, Vibrio, and H2R. And so this is where all of the links are going to live and anything that changes, this is going to be the web page where you're going to find all of the things that you need to do to install this. Um, very quickly, so within Companion, under VLC and H2R and Vicrio, these are all running on the local computer. So it's 127001. And there's some other videos about how to go through that whole install process. As another example, if you've got the uh, 15 button version of the Pro, for example, 
let's see how we'd go installing that. I'm going to pick another page. I'm going to jump over to page 65 and I'm going to go to import, import. So I'm going to find the profile, which is the 15 button pro version. I'm going to import that. And I'm just going to change this one over to extreme because this is what I've got plugged in. So some of it will work and some of it won't. Um, but again, if you're installing this from scratch, you would just go install and you would create new instances for this. I'm going to target that one and then Vicario VLC and H2R. I'm going to use what's already here locally on the Mac. So I'm going to import that onto there. And if I cut across to this page, I'm going to go back to my show page and I had a trial 15 set up here. So now this is what that looks like. Now, what I'm running here is actually a 32 button stream deck, but if you're running a 15, then you're only gonna have these top uh, buttons here. And back in the software, you'll see that you actually have access to all of these other buttons outside of that. Um, there was just by default companion is gonna, these spaces here are all going to be blank or like not on the board. So these are just buttons that are sitting sort of off screen. So if you wanted to bring them in, you could. Um, for this page, I've chosen to bring in uh, cameras one, two, three, four, and then media player one. And that's going to take these to program, but you could instead um, cut and paste. Um, so I could go um, cut and paste and cut and paste and cut and paste and just move these buttons around. Um, so now what I'm doing here, if I cut back over here, is uh, I'm going to be changing the, the preview of these sources rather than program. So you can choose how you want to set this up yourself. So it's just a place to start and similar to what I was doing before with the extreme version, you've also got um, your slide control, graphics and some video playback if you want to do that with VLC. If you're starting from scratch, then you're probably going to install this onto page one. But if you have your own profile like I do and you've installed it on a random page, like for me it's pages you know, 64 and 65, then you're probably going to want your Stream Deck to start on that page. So we're going to go into Surfaces and then you're going to choose your Stream Deck. I've got two connected here, Settings. And then I'm actually going to choose the startup page. So I want to get to page 65, so I'm going to uncheck Use Last Page at Startup. I drag this across and if I cut to my Stream Deck, you'll see that it's actually scrubbing through these pages as I get up to page 65, that's the one I was working on. I'm going to cut back and go close. Um, so now we've, we've saved this Stream Deck to always start on page 65. And this is where if you ever purchase one of my paid versions, you'll find that different pages, different, sorry, different profiles start on different pages. So for example, the ATEM Mini Pro profile starts on page 66 because the Extreme takes up the pages before it. Now, what are you going to do if you don't actually have a Stream Deck? Maybe you want to get started right away and you don't want to go and spend the money on the hardware. Well, you can actually run an emulator. So in the top left-hand corner here, if I click emulator, it's going to pop up this window and this is going to enable me to uh, change all my inputs and do that from the computer. But let's just say that I want to do this on a phone or a tablet. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back up to my little window here and show hide window. And I want to actually put it on my wireless network, which is 192.168.8.107. This is the address of my Mac that is actually running the companion server. Um, so I'm going to change it to that. I'm going to relaunch the GUI and I can just shut down all these other windows because I don't need them. So now if I click on emulator and I've got 192.168.8.107, which is the address of my computer, I'm going to go to share, airdrop that to my phone. It's going to pop up here on my phone. And if I just turn this sideways and zoom it in a bit, you'll see that I've actually got control here and can actually um, click on the buttons to remote control uh, the ATEM from this setup. It's on a phone, but it'd be actually better if it was on a tablet, a little more space to move around. So that's how you can get started if you want. It's actually running wirelessly too. I've just got this connected in for power and for um, a video out so I can record this. But you could walk around a venue and be remote controlling your um, ATEM. 
Okay, last thing, as a bonus, I'll very quickly go through how you would put this onto a Pi. So for a hundred bucks, you could get yourself a Pi and you could move this whole system off your Mac or your Windows machine and just onto a Pi so that it's sitting in your rig and you can run Companion just whenever you boot up your ATEM, it'll be there ready to go and you don't have to worry about starting things up on your actual computer. Um, so I have one of these plugged into my computer already. What you're going to do is go to Companion Pi, Companion Pi, just search for that and you will find on GitHub, github.com bitfocus. Documentation here on how to install it. If you scroll down, what you're looking for here is this companion image. The latest one was um, July of last year. Click on that and it will begin downloading it. Um, likewise, you want to get some Pi uh, installer. I can't remember what it's called. Um, basically, if you go to Raspberry Pi, you're going to get the imager and you're going to download that for Mac or Windows. Um, I've already got that, so that is basically in my applications here. I open up the Raspberry Pi imager, and then I can choose my OS, which is going to be using custom, and that is going to be under my ugh, permissions, man. Um, we've got uh, Companion Pi image. I downloaded earlier today. This one's going here as well. Um, so you would open that. And then you would choose storage, and this is where you would plug in your micro SD card into the computer. I don't actually have anything plugged in here where it, so it's not showing up. So I'd choose that, and then I would go write, and I would just write that to the SD card. So then I would quit it. I would plug it back into the, into the base of my Pi. So uh, this SD card goes into the Pi. And then I'm basically plugging in a network cable into the same network that I'm running my other uh, devices on. And then you've got USB ports if you want to plug in your Stream Deck into there directly. And you can also do um, the USB-C power in and you've got the two HDMI out and an audio out if you did need that. And then on a Mac, I can actually open up VNC Viewer and take a bit to get going. So I'm going to skip through, you can find your way through that. So now I'm accessing the Pi in a sort of headless mode without a monitor or a keyboard or a mouse. I'm using my Max one to show me what's going on in the Pi. This is what the Pi is running on, 192.168.8.189 port 8000 is the companion installation on the Pi. So you notice that's different to the Mac one that I was on previously, which was over, where are we here? Uh, which is 107 is what my Mac is running on. And if I wanted to, I can even on my Mac just type in that address, which was uh, 192.168.89. Okay, so notice this address here. That is my Pi, so I can actually, don't even need to be going through the um, VNC viewer. I can be looking at it through the web browser. So, um, it just means that it's always there in the rack and I can have the control of it and not have to worry about running that on a particular machine. Likewise, I would do the same thing with the phone in terms of directing the emulator to that address for the Pi rather than for the Mac. So that's a quick overview of how to install the custom companion profiles that I've built for the ATEM Mini series. As I said before, you don't have to have a Stream Deck. Stream Deck's great, and if you can afford it, I recommend going to get one because that's what it's all about in terms of having the tactile buttons. But if you just want to get started, or you don't have the money, or even if you do have a Stream Deck, but somewhere else on your network, you just want to spin up a, an emulator for someone else to control um, or to walk around wirelessly, that's a great option in terms of being able to get additional control over your ATEM minis that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Again, make sure you check out the installation page on my website under install installation guide. That is going to be your best guide in terms of what's the most up-to-date information on things that might change in the application. And um, if you need to download the profile, go to davidjoshuaford.com slash companion to download one of these profiles to match your stream deck. It's going to be a really great way to get started with some things that are already laid out for you so that you don't have to sort of fumble your way through trying to install things and work out a layout. And if you have any questions about this, drop me a note in the comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you and to help you through that. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.